Hey there YouTube, Artichoke Diff back here. And uh, my name is Rob. I refer to myself as Gamer Rob, solo RPG enthusiast. And um, so with that in mind, if you notice, um, I didn't put out any videos last weekend, and there was kind of a reason behind that. No, and I'm gonna explain that. So a very close friend of mine, um, James, he lives in England and me and him video chat <coughs> every weekend. Normally Saturday mornings is uh, we spend most of the morning talking. He's just like me, an RPG enthusiast. He loves to hobby, he loves miniatures. And um, so we were talking about different game systems and um, what we liked about them, what we didn't like about them. And um, he thinks a lot like me. So I was talking about the game room. I was kind of bouncing some ideas off of him. And I had a spare bedroom in my house that... Um, I used to put all my stuff to make these videos and game, but the problem was is I've never really fully utilized this area the way I should have. And part of that is because, well, let's face it, sometimes we get lazy, right? I mean, sometimes work gets in the way and other things get in the way and stuff we really like to do. We're always like, eh, get to it tomorrow, eh, get to it tomorrow, and it never comes. So, he started, uh coming up with some ideas and saying, hey, you know, maybe you should try this, maybe you should try that. And a lot of them I was really receptive to because I was kind of already thinking, yeah, that's probably what I should do. So I did it. 20 hours worth of work. Um, and that's what it took me to completely take everything out of this place, go through everything, scrap everything out. Not scrap everything out, but um, get rid of purge all the unwanted, unnecessary. And... In the corner of the room, I had this beautiful oak table that was sitting there that had boxes on top of it, boxes stacked underneath it, and um, it was just kind of, it was not usable. So what I had um, done is gone through all this stuff, and I ran across some old HeroScape stuff that I kind of forgot I had. These have been boxed up, out of sight, out of mind. So I went through, and I um, sorted everything, put all my sets back together, and that's when it dawned on me for this video. So this video is not going to be about solo RPG. This video is going to be about solo 28mm miniature play. And it's a video, something I've never really got into. And thanks to all you guys out there, all my subscribers. And you know, mentioning that, if you like my video, please feel free to crush that like button or hit subscribe. Hit the little bell and you get notified every time I post a brand new video and you'll see all my latest videos. So, getting back to my YouTube subscribers, all of them, they, some, a lot of them, I should say not all of them, but a lot of you guys suggested some game systems to me. A lot of them I purchased, some of them I have downloaded on PDF, I have played, and some of them I'm still learning, some of them I'm still kind of like, oh, do I like it, don't I like it, don't know, gotta play with it a little bit longer. So, um, one of the books I had picked up and it kept kind of going on the back burner, back burner, back burner, was um, this book right here. And it's called Song of Bleeds and Heroes. Now, one of the things that attracted me to it is, as I was reading it, it said there were rules in here how to play a uh, miniature skirmish solo. So I picked it up and I read through it. Um, so... You know, my first impression of it, um, actually playing miniatures, is I already knew most of it out of here. So it was like, okay, I know how movement works. I know how melee combat works. I know how range combat works. I know how magic spells and all that other stuff works. So um, it was a good refresher for me, but I already knew it. Um, until I found this chart and how they rate... Um, what they refer to as models. They don't call them miniatures, they call them models. And each of them have a quality value to it. And you roll two six-sided dice or one six-sided dice or however many dice you allot to that particular miniature. And depending on the success or failure, will there's a chart that'll tell you how many times that particular miniature activates. And um, or if it does, you may lose your turn and it may be passed to your opponent, or you may be able to take two turns on one. So that really intrigued me, and I wanted to do a game. So I built this humongous HeroScape battle map, put everything in, and um, 
I'm going to explain how I run the encounters and how I put them on the board. When we get into that, we're not into that quite yet. So the reason why I'm using HeroScape, the reason why I'm using HeroScape, there's a couple of reasons. One, I like HeroScape. Two, I haven't played HeroScape in a while. In the first video I did make, um, I, there were, how do I put this? <clears throat> um, using this system, it put a lot of stuff, a lot of checks and balances in to the system, and it, I have to, I had fun with it. I had fun with it. I mean, it's not as fun as playing um, with an opponent, with a real person, but as far as this goes, it adds strategy and it it makes miniatures fun and it, I had fun with it you know when it comes to miniatures there's two things that help you win the game one is your wits and two is the luck of the die believe it or not a lot of times nine times out of ten the luck of the die is what wins you the game and sometimes the dice go cold and when they go cold it's never good so <laughs> with that in mind um, so, excellent book. I'm going to explain how I use this chart in here, and I'm going to use HeroScape. Another thing about HeroScape, the reason I'm using it, is it's going to be easier for me to explain that to you because the system's already here. HeroScape is a very simple miniature game. It's one of them game systems that you could teach an 8-year-old, and you could teach an 80-year-old, and both of them would be able to understand it fairly quickly and be able to enjoy it and everybody from that age bracket in between um it's kind of hard to believe that in 2004 is when this game system came out i loved it the modular system of it how you could build the maps the expansions the miniatures everything about it and then you know i don't know if it was online gaming or what wound up happening maybe sales started to decline but at that point hasbro just stopped making it and nothing has been done with hero escape since so i don't know the full story behind it i just know they don't make it anymore you can still purchase it obviously you can find it on amazon and ebay and there's also website stores out there all over the internet that the only thing they deal with is hero escape um like i said it is out of print so it gets back to that old saying it is expensive um you, you know you figure when you could go into the store and buy this back in 2004, the well, master set was 40 bucks, and back then that was kind of pricey for a game, 40 bucks. And um, you know now they're asking upwards of 200 dollars for a master set, but that's for a brand new master set unopened. So that's what I mean by uh, it's kind of pricey. So I'm just using the HeroScape as a way. To be able to convey to you with miniatures and to try to make it as simple to understand as possible and have a little fun with it so let's get into some terms of miniatures what a miniatures game is and what now eh, let's just get into what 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 the heck is a miniatures game what the heck is it artichoke okay a miniatures game is where you and an opponent, or as I'm going to play solo here, me and what I refer to as the board, because the board will be controlling my opponent. Um, you draft an army of miniatures, and they're put on the board. Now, there's the old um, classic capture the flag, which there's an objective on the floor. On the, <laughs> on the floor, that's a good term. And the first side to reach it and to... Um, be able to retrieve that objective wins the game. The second one is um, last man standing. Last man standing is you draft the army, your opponent drafts the army, you go and slaughter one another, and the last one with a miniature piece standing on the board wins. And those are fun. They're pretty ruthless. They're fun. And if you have an opponent to play with, you got to try it. The bigger the army, the better. Now, the third is historical. Now, historical are for people who enjoy World War One, World War II, um, 
history and these people will go through great lengths of designing um, the miniature terrain, the houses and making everything as historically correct as possible and then they will actually replay a particular event that happened in real history and replay it with miniatures. Um, now for me I don't really get into that um, you know I like fantasy so when I play miniatures I want to see zombies and dragons and ogres and demons and bugbears and orcs and in heroes and spellcasters and just <laughs> and well how do I put this you don't really get that um, with historical minis so not saying it's bad just saying you know it's not my can of monster all right sorry I'm uh, sipping on the monster guys um, Took me a long time to set up the map, set everything up. I put a lot of work into the video and then I went to go upload it. And of course, you know, YouTube says it's too long, which it was too long of a video. I have to admit that it was almost two hours long. So I'm gonna make a shorter, more condensed <laughs> video for you guys to understand. So let's get into miniatures kind of got off track. So we understand the basic capture the flag, um, last man standing, or historical. Now those are what they refer to as a scenario and that's a scenario of the game. The scenario of my game that I am playing and I have set up is this is an old um, stronghold keep that has fallen into ruins. There is a dragon that has found an ancient orb of power from which it's drawing evil from it, trying to bring about the next cataclysm. And of course, it has called up a army of evil around it to protect this ruined sites. And my miniatures slash heroes are gonna go in and of course try to kill the minions, find their way to the dragon, slay the dragon, take the orb, and Everything's supposed to be good. Well, last time it didn't work. It, they just got totally slaughtered right off the bat. This time might be different. So, let's take a look at the map. And let's talk about different types. Oh, sorry about that. Dropped you guys. Let's talk about different types of miniatures. And let me uh, zoom in here a little bit. So... Right here we have our Archer um, Severus. Obviously the thing about Archers when it comes to miniatures, they have great range, but their defense is not that great. Unlike if we move down over here to Morgren Forgehammer, who he has special abilities for his defense. As you can see, he's got armor, he's got a pretty wicked weapon, and you know he can deliver some damage let's get him into view to take a look at him Oop. so yeah he's a pretty wicked looking guy here and then of course we have um, this guy which is Solon and he has the ability to heat dragon has the ability to heal him and the dragon has the ability to attack opponents and take points from him which is pretty cool. Let's take a look at the map before we get started and I explain a little bit more. So this is my um, castle ruins and as you can see this is what's supposed to be what was the upper section of the castle that obviously has fallen through. As you can see there's water here, there's nasty swamp there. We come around to the front here and of course there's no longer any gate um, on the front and as you can see we have an orc patrol out front of there as we come around this way this is what I call the wood winding way and this is the other way in to the interior of the ruin area and as you can see we have right here we got an orc 
patrol going through the woods. We also have some mischievous goblins right here that looks like they have just raided this uh, cart. And of course we got this guy right here, this humongous ogre that's swinging the ball and chain. And uh, we come over to here and we're closer to the dragon so it's gonna have her stronger minions or his stronger minions um, right here protecting the entrance to get into the keep and of course there's fire elementals and cinder type of elemental dudes that are also protecting the way and zombies dragon orb more zombies and more zombies and more zombies and more zombies and of course this is supposed to be the lowest part of the ruins which as you can see here's the floor that has fallen through We've got some skeletal wargs walking through here and this is supposed to be the shadow this is out of an expansion for D&D &D. For hero escape and of course we have some specters and here are some spirits roaming all right so now you're familiar with the map you see what's going on now if you can tell something about the map i really have this set up for height advantage and there's quite a bit here here and if you look across the board over here and right here. Now I did that on purpose to kind of when I built the map to kind of show you um, the difference when it comes to scenario map kind of how you want to look at stuff. So you see what's going on here you can see we got the different levels for ranged attack. Now we also have the choke points here for melee on the board but I don't always block it off entirely. I always give more than one path to get around. Now, I have played um, miniatures with other people where you have one choke point. Um, and sometimes, you know, that's not very enjoyable, especially when you're the person that's caught in that choke point. And um, it really, really, really stinks. So, anyways, guys, I think that's enough jabber about the board I think you guys get a good idea now when I start out if you notice I already have miniatures on the board these guys when I when I have played solo are already technically in play the board has just not activated them yet and I'm going to explain to you what I mean by that so let's look down here at the characters. Oh, I'm sorry, miniatures. So the first one I'm going to be using is Severus. He has a double attack. When Severus attacks, he may attack one additional time. He has a move of five. So if you look at the game board, each one of these spaces represents one movement tile. So Severus can move five of those anywhere he wants in any direction. He has a range of nine so he has a range of nine spaces in any straight line so if we were to count off the spaces from here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine he has a range all the way out to here. Now being that he is technically above everything here he automatically gets an extra die to his attack roll because he has height advantage anything over 10 layers or 10 levels however you want to look at it he gets another attack die so technically where Severus is right now he gets two extra attack die starting out right off the rip which is pretty good so I'm Severus will be one of my first ones I'm going to choose the next one I'm going to choose will be Solon. And um, he can heal with the dragon. It can also cause um, points with the dragon. 
damage points um, with his Dragon Swoop, and same thing, he has 6 life points, he has a move of 5, he has a range of 6, he has an attack of 4, and he has a defense of 3. So he's going to be the second guy I'm going to choose. And let me get into the third guy. I think the third guy I'm going to choose here is going to be Tandros Krill. And Tandros Krill, he has a plus two broadsword, which gives him two extra dice to his attack roll. He has cleave, um, so when there is a, a character adjacent, uh, sorry, a miniature adjacent to him, he may choose one squad figure that is also adjacent to Tandros Krill. If the defending figure receives any wounds from Tandros Krill's attack, the chosen figure receives one wound marker. So he has combat challenge. The simplicity of the game, I don't want to overcomplicate this. We're going to use the plus two broadsword with him. He has a life of seven, seven life points, I'm sorry. He can move five spaces. He has a range of five. He has an attack of two, and he has a defense of four. All right, guys. I think you get the gist of that. And now we're going to get into solo how we do this solo and as I explained to you I have my book here and um, how I do it technically all the opponent or the board's miniatures are already in play it's just when I get close to them to where they have a clear range of sight on me they can move towards me unless I already have the equal amount of miniatures I'm already currently engaged in battle with. So if I have three different miniature types, three different cards I'm currently engaged with battle with, at that point I'm not going to move any other miniatures towards me because they're already engaged with my miniatures, my miniatures are already engaged with theirs. So that's kind of how I do that the solo way. Okay, so First thing I'm going to do is take the two dice, and we're going to roll for Severus. Okay, that's a one. We'll just get this skunk. I've been skunked. That's a failure. That's a success. So uh, looking at the chart, and one success, one failure. Model performs one action, then player nominates another figure and rolls to it. Okay, one action means um, in Heroescape, Severus gets one turn, and then at that point, I get to nominate another one, which I'm going to go with Solon. Solon, roll two six-siders. I have a three and a two, so I'm going to count that as two successes. So, with two successes, this model may perform two actions, the player nominates another figure. So how I use that with Heroescape, he'll be able to take two turns. He's only going to get one. He will get two. And he gets to, at that point, draft another figure, which will be him. One failure and one success. One failure, one success. At that point, he gets to take one turn, nominate uh, another miniature. Well, I'm out of dice. My dice pools out, so I have um, nothing more to go on. And at that point, it's time to start the phase of my miniatures. So now I look at my roll. I got a three and a two here. I got a four and a one here. I got a one and a three here. So obviously, we're gonna go with this guy right here. He's got the highest die out of all of them. He will be the first one to go. And then these two will follow behind. So here's my spawning point, and he has a move of five. So one, two, three, four. I won't be able to go up here because in order to step up this level it costs one movement point. So I'm at four, so it'd be five, six. So I have to stop here, which is okay because there's a glyph there. 
So let's see what glyph he got. He received the glyph of Valda. Move plus two. So he gets an extra two. Now this miniature from here on out gets an extra two movement for the rest of the game. So now he's at five, four actually, five, six. Now his movement's complete. He can no longer move any further. He is rank, he is uh, melee, so I got a, an opponent clearly in the line of sight. Let me move that out of the way so you can see what's going on. But there's not much he can do about it. So he will not be able to do a combat action this turn. So the second one that I'm going to activate will be Severus. And Severus, of course, he has the range of nine. And I think Severus is going to do this a little bit differently. He has a move of five. Now, when it comes to moving miniatures, you can move through a, a friendly occupied spot, but you cannot move through an enemy or opponent occupied spot and vice versa. You cannot do it. So he can go one, two, three. Now, because I am technically 10 floors above and I got height advantage, Severus gets two extra attack dice on these zombies that are unaware of his presence. So let's take a look at the zombies and see what the zombies have to offer. And um, this is going to be very cool. I forgot to put a few glyphs back on board. If you're wondering, I'm going to need some dice. And... Let's go. So, hero escape dice are a little bit different than your run of the mill RPG dice. And I love them. So, in, let me zoom in so you guys can see a little bit closer. So, in Hero Quest, you have these are first edition dice. You have the red dice. The skulls mean it's a successful attack. The blank means no attack. The blue are your defense. And the shield means that's one defense. And the blank means nothing is what that means. See, it's blank. All right. So if you look at the cards, obviously blue matches up with defense, red matches up with attack, blah, 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 blah. Very simple to understand. So, just wanted to explain that to you while I'm rolling the dice. Now it's time to kill some zombies. Now the cool thing about Severus is once he takes an attack, when Severus attacks, he may attack one additional time. So, he has a normal attack of three, but he adds an extra one for his height advantage, and he's above ten levels, so he gets another one. So he's going to get a total of five dice to attack with. So, obviously, these guys are all well within range of Severus, as you can see. If we count off the squares, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, let's pluck him first. And he has four successes. Now, the zombie let's, has a defense of three. Yeah, I know, there's really no point in rolling a defense because the zombie is, well, let's face it, dead. But, uh, you always, always roll it just for your own personal humor. And no successes. That is what you call a dead zombie. So this is what's called thwap. Now Severus gets to take another attack. He's going to take it on this, um, well oblivious zombie that does not know what's going on. Classic ranged attack here, folks. One success. So he has a total of three successes. So now the zombie has a three defense, and he could get this one. But he only gets one, and he doesn't. Well, so that was Severus's turn. 
Now let's move to... Hey, zombies aren't mine. I have Solon. And Solon, let's uh, take a look at Solon here. He has a move of 5, a range of 6, attack of 4, and a defense of 3. So Solon's going to move 5 spaces. 1, 2, 3, and I'm going to pick up that glyph that he is currently on. And he's going to go 4, and now 5. And let's see what glyph he got here. The holy symbol of Paylor attack plus two versus undead. This is very good to have because now his attack is a four, but against, I don't know, zombies, ghosts, he gets six. Mm. But before we get too excited, it is now the board's turn. That is, I like to explain. The board being dun, 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 the zombies. Now, obviously, the objective of my characters are to get to the lower levels of the ruins, to access the orb, defeat the dragon, blah, 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 blah. So, Obviously, we're going to take this way to get down to those areas. But if you look, besides this guy, which technically, they're really not in his line of sight, up being up here, because, I mean, he's dead. So, but for, I guess, um, grins and giggles, we'll just say, yeah, okay, he starts migrating this way to attack the guys. But if you notice on the board, um... Really, the only other thing I have that is within my line of sight would be these guys down here. So, eh, it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. And we'll see how it goes. So, utilizing the same way I did mine, guys. I have a dice pool of six. And, of course, zombies will be first. And followed by, I don't believe I'm going to send, you know, the big boss out to begin with. That would just be all sorts of cruel. I'm <laughs> just, I wouldn't even do that if I was playing against somebody else. But we will send the minions of Utgar towards them. And, of course, I'm going to draft another zombie card here because there are three of these guys per card and there's one scraggler left so let's roll and see who what and how it goes so first roll two successes so these guys right here are going to get two turns and of course they get to elect another card And boom, two successes with the minions of Utgard. Same thing, they get two turns and uh, elect another card, which will be that, <laughs> um, that soul zombie. And he gets one, six, one failure and one success. So he gets to take his one normal turn and unfortunately, dice pools out, so we can't really elect anybody else. So let's look at the dice, who has the highest of them. Obviously, these guys do right here. So, let's get this going, huh? Sorry about the weird camera angle. Um, I'm, the sleeves on my sweater were just kind of driving me bonkers, and I had to pull it up out of the way. Sorry about that, guys. All right. So... Now, let's see what the zombies are capable of. Actually, I can tell you. Zombies have horrid movement, so they can all move together as one. They can all attack as one. And the horrible thing about the zombie is if it kills your miniature, it can immediately bring 
it back as a zombie, but it cannot attack or move until the following turn. They only have one life point, they have a move of four, they have a range of one, which means they're melee, they have an attack of two, and they got a defense of three. So, let's move the zombies. He's going to move here, so it's going to cost him two, three, one, two, three, and then I'll say four. All right. So, thing that stinks is this is only their first turn of two. These two guys are going to combine their attack against him. So, instead of just two attacks, they'll be doing four attacks at once. I mean, two attacks at once. So, they got two successes, and... For Solon, he has a defense of three. He has two successes. So their second attack will be two successes. And his will be nothing. He takes two points of damage. Yeesh. So he does have a six. He's now, at this point, put two life marker tokens on there. He's at a six. These are telling me he's down to a four life points right now. Now, um, oh, I'm sorry. I did that wrong. And I had my miniatures mixed up. I got to redo that. I had the wrong miniature. I was rolling for this guy, not this guy. So let's do this over again. First attack, three successes. He has a defense of four. He gets three successes. Now it's time for their second attack. Two successes. And with him, one success, which means he'll take one point of damage. So he'll go from seven to six. All right. Now, attack on Solon. So first attack, nothing. Second attack, nada. Hey, I like the way that goes. So now, the minions of Utgar. So, they have, um, instead of taking a turn with the minions of Utgar, you may take a turn with any Kyrie warrior you control who follows Utgar. All right, that's for the hero scape setting. I'm not going to get into that uh, for the explanation of this video. Deadly Strike when attacking with minions of Utgar. All skulls rolled. Count for one additional hit. Ooh, that's horrible. Flying when counting spaces for minions of Utgar. Movement, ignore elevation. Minions of Utgar may fly over water without stopping. Pass over figures without becoming engaged. And fly over obstacles such as ruins. When a minion of Utgar starts to fly, if he is engaged, he will take any leaving engagement attacks. There we go. They get a life of one, a move of four, a range of one, attack of two, and a defense of six. So, oh, they only get to move four, which is good. So on their turn move one two three four one two three four and of course they land on the glyph one two three four and let's see what glyph they get this could either be really good or really bad potion of healing heal three wounds um Basically, uh, this stinks because um, 
Hmm. Well, it's not exactly a resurrection potion. And they only got one life point. So, um, I really didn't... I have different glyphs throughout the game. And I just um, put them out face down so I wouldn't know what was where. But I don't think this... This isn't going to be able to be used with these guys. They only get one life point, and this is really made for these guys right here. We have multiple life points. So I'm just going to set that glyph aside. All right. So that was their turn. <laughs> now we got the lonely zombie. One, two, three, four. All right, and that was the board's turn. So now, once again, goes back to um, my roll, and I'm gonna keep everything the way as it was, and hopefully everything goes decent. So let's do the first roll. One failure, one success, one turn, elect him. Oh, you gotta hate when you drop dice. Oh. Okay, two successes. So he gets two turns and gets to elect him. Who gets two successes? And of course, dice pulls out, but he gets two turns as well. So... Now, before I go any further, as I was reading the minions of Utgar movement, um, just so everybody knows, um, when you have flying, you get to ignore, um, ignore elevation, you just move spaces. If you do not have flying, anytime you hit any water tiles whatsoever, as you can see that green swampy stuff there, we got water down here, your movement phase automatically stops until your next turn. And then your movement is half. You can only move half your movement in water. So, uh, I just wanted to throw that out there. But, for the sake of the demonstration of this video, just to show you how the system works, I'm going to play probably through one more hand, and I think um, that should really wrap it up, because it's probably been about, I'm guessing, close to an hour for this video now. It always goes by quick with miniatures. Alright, so, looking at my dice, obviously my highest roll is Solon. And he's going to take his turn first. Of course he is, because he gets an attack of six against that zombie. So, he gets two turns. Um, obviously, I have no way... Well, I could actually, technically, yes, I can move. And I have a move of five, so I can go one, two, three, four, five... One, two, three, four. But if I do that, then I will not. Nope, I'm not going to do that. So what I'm going to do is keep him here. And um, unfortunately, I'm going to be able to do my attacks, but I'm going to lose my movement phase. Because um, it's movement phase, then attack phase. And if I move them all the way around here, I'm not going to have enough movement to get them up here to be able to attack these. So it would be a waste, and I really don't want to waste it. So, let's see how things are going to pan out. He, 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 he. Okay, so he got six dice. And he only gets two successes. These zombies have a defense of three. They get one, so he's dead. That zombie's cooked. He's off the board. I'm just going to put him over there. Now, unfortunately, well, he can technically probably swat at his feet, so I'm going to use another attack here on him. So I can see him. He's in within line. He does have a line of sight on him. And he gets three successes. And zombie only rolls two. So 
another zombie down, which leaves him right there. All right. Now, moving on, the next one will be Severus. And I think what Severus is going to do is he's going to turn his attention to these guys down here now. So, he's got a clear line of sight from where he's at. Same thing with Severus. Severus gets two turns, so technically he will get four attacks. And he has a normal attack of three. He gets one for height advantage and another one for being ten levels above. So he get a total of five. He 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 he. So first zombie. He rolls three successes on this guy right here. This guy, he's going to roll poorly. One success. So another zombie down. Next guy. He rolls three successes. The zombie would have to roll perfect. And he rolls nothing. Another zombie off the board. This is end of first turn. Now going into beginning of second turn. Three successes. Nothing. So he has wiped out those zombies. Now I have one shot left and I'm gonna see if I have enough space to shoot. Start picking off that ogre. So he's gonna have one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Just right inside. Just and he does have a line of sight. If you look at where Severus is at, he does have a line of sight on him. So, let me get the ogre card out here. And let's see what kind of hideousness, hideousness our ogre has in store for us, shall we? Oh, man. A dragon. We don't need a dragon right now. Ah, there he is. Haha. -ha. So he has wounded smash. When Krug attacks, he receives one extra attack die for each wound marker he has. And if you notice, he's got a big life, life of eight. So he can intentionally, um, eventually, when he's down to his last life, become plus 10 to attack. So that's pretty horrible. He has a defense of 3, but he gets a double attack. When Krug attacks, he may attack one additional time. So it's kind of one of those, um, how do I put this? Uh, the quicker you try to kill him, the bigger and better he gets. So let me fire the first arrow, basically put the first sharp stick in this thing's eye to make him bigger and meaner. So Severus rolls two successes on him. He has three defense. And he rolls one. He takes one life point, which at this point he went from an attack two to attack three now. All right. That was Severus' turn. Now let's move on to... Um, Tandros, and Tandros will take his turn. He gets one turn. He's going to attack him. He has an attack of two, but he's using a broadsword, so he gets two additional dice to do so. And he rolls three successes there. The zombie is going to roll defense. Rolls one, and that zombie is gone. All right. All right. So, uh, now if I wanted to use, which I did not use for the demonstration of this video, but before I took an attack, I could have rolled a 20-sider 
And with him, if I would have had a 15 or higher, uh, 16, I would have got it. I would have been able to remove one life point marker and help restoring him towards health to himself or to any other of my miniatures. So, but I think, uh, I think you guys got the gist of it. And I think you guys got a good idea of solo miniatures and what you how you can use this book to get a good idea of play. And that's the way I use it. And as you can see, um, I mean the last last round, the zombies got double attacks. You know, kind of got one up on my miniatures, but then the turn after that, the way that the dice fell, my guys got extra ones. Um, and to give you a good example, look at Severus. Severus got them double attacks, and look how lethal he was on the board. And he cleared out a whole entire um, group of zombies and started attacking the ogre at the inner keep. That's where I'm going to pick up after I get done making this video. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the little demonstration. Miniatures can be very fun. It can be very, very fun. And it's all what you put into it. Now, you don't need HeroScape. Um, as you can see with a lot of my videos with RPG, you could reuse dungeon tiles. You could use maps. Um, um, sorry, I need another drink of Monster to get my brain kicking again. You could use the vinyl mats that I use for RPG. You could even, you don't even need to use that. You could use a ruler, just like so. One inch is your movement, and it'll explain that in this book. And in there, they explain the same idea, like I've used, I've showed before, where I've taken a little piece of dowel and marked off sections on it. And I've used that for miniatures, which works very well in another way. And you could play it just on the table. And um, you could even go as far as if you wanted to do a snow scene. You could take a white bed sheet. You could stack books on the table, throw the bed sheet over it where you'd have your hills. You'd have height advantage. You'd have valleys. You'd have all that stuff. And using a roller, ruler, some dice, that book, you could have some fun. You could have some real good fun with that. So, hope this video helped, guys. I hope maybe this will intrigue you to get into uh, miniatures a little bit more. Play some miniatures. Um, you know, sometimes it's fun to take a break from RPG and play with some miniatures, do some skirmish battle. Um, and it's really cool to do that, where um, if you've ever been, you know, brainstorming with your RPGs and you come up with an idea for a cool place that you could imagine in your mind where a small skirmish may take place outside of a tavern or perhaps on a certain unique um, dungeon area or wherever miniatures gives you the opportunity to actually create a little battle scene like that put some miniatures out there and bring your imagination to life and sit down and play it and tweak it and see what you can come up with to make more unique and interesting how do I put this um, areas out of your map that you wouldn't think about normally in RPGs such as height advantage, choking points, and so on and so forth that you'll find in miniatures. So to wrap this video up, um, like I said, if you liked the video, please press like. Please feel free to subscribe and uh, hit the little bell icon and you'll get my videos as soon as they are uploaded. The last uh, book I want to talk about, now that you got a little bit better understanding of miniatures, of how the game kind of flows and what it's about and how to use it, is this one. It's called One Hour War Games. One Hour War Games, this is a scenario booklet. If you play miniatures and you enjoy playing miniatures and maybe you're looking to get back into it or perhaps um, you're looking for some fresh scenarios for your game board, this is one I'd highly recommend to pick up. Um, it's designed to be played in, in around one hour on a three foot by three foot table. 
simple but effective rules for eight historical periods from ancient times to World War II, 30 scenarios adaptable to all periods with clear victory conditions. So if you're just starting out in miniatures, you're going to want to hold off on this one for a while. Do you get miniatures underneath your belt? I would recommend picking this one up. Song of Blades and Heroes. Getting you familiarized with this, how miniatures operate. There's some scenarios in here playing through them. And then once you get these under your belt and you're pretty comfortable with them, pretty simple. Move on to this and you can always alter it. Now for me, um, I would change stuff. I would use the map and the scenario conditions in this and I would change it to fit fantasy. Now I have thumbed through a lot of these and I have, as you can see, bookmarked off some that I'm like, hey, that's pretty cool and I wanna try it. Now that I got the space again, we'll be trying it. All right, so guys, Hope you enjoyed this video. Um, hope this kind of, um, how do I put this, uh, kind of gets you in a direction of playing some miniatures. And miniatures is very cool. It's a very fun game. I will put a link for HeroScape on, um, from Amazon. And um, you guys can look at what they have. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that are selling it. And like I said, HeroScape, it's very expensive right now. I do like the game system. I was collecting it when it was out and it was very reasonably priced. But it's one of those things if you're just starting out in this hobby, you might not want to... Uh, yeah, you may want to find something a little cheaper. Um, stick to the basics. D&D um, &D minis or Pathfinder or um, a host of other things. And that brings me to a really good point of miniatures. And what do I mean by that? You don't have to buy pewter miniatures. You don't have to buy these guys that come pre-painted and all that. You can, as a matter of fact, if you want to save yourself money and you want to do a World War II, um, let's say, miniature scenario, go to the dollar store, buy yourself some of them little green army guys. It's all you need. You can paint them to make them look cooler if you want to and use them on your board. All you got to do is assign them. Obviously, you look at them. One's going to have a machine gun. One's going to have a flamethrower. So on and so forth. Write up your stats. Keep it simplistic. Um, that's why I like this system right here. I mean, it lays it all out for you. How many spaces they move. Ah! Their range, their attack, and their defense. Very simple. And that's all you got to worry about with miniatures. Once you get that down, it's cool. So... And keep your eyes peeled. Um, you'd be surprised what you'll find out there that a little bit of paint and an imagination, you can make a really cool miniature. And with this game book, like I said, this is an entire game system onto itself in here. It'll explain to you how, as they refer as a model, how to take whatever you're using, even a little green army guy, and convert it over into a status. Just in the back, they have a lot of templates for their miniatures with this game. Okay, um, give you an example right here. They have a skeleton human. He has a hand weapon and a shield. He has a combat bonus of combat of two. He has a quality of three plus. He is undead, obviously. Uh, he has 26 points, and of course, there's special rules and you go in there and you would read the special rules that they allot to that particular model. So with that being said guys, I think I'm gonna end this video now. And um as always thanks from the bottom of my heart to all you guys for subscribing and supporting me and being part of this uh you know cool really cool channel. I feel really really humbled and really grateful that uh you know, I have so many people out there that engage with this and love to hear me ramble on about the games I like to play and how to play them. And, you know, when, well, you can't find anybody else to play the game with you. And um, thank you. And for my new subscribers that have just recently subscribed, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Welcome to the channel. And, um, you know, feel free to drop me a line, leave me a comment. I'll answer a question for you. And I'll answer it to the best of my ability that I can. And if not, I'll research it and see what I can find out for you to get you an answer. All right, my friends.
game on, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.